Okay, thank you very much. I would like to, to start with a brief in introduction. How did I come to Holocaust education? In 2007, I was invited by UNESCO to initiate an international project in education. It could be on whatever I want. It could be on chess education, ballet education, and I decided to do it on Holocaust education. At the beginning, UNESCO didn't agree with me and said that it's an over-politicized issue and they didn't want to deal with it. But then I was very stubborn and I didn't give up. And uh, I met with uh, Professor Dol Stevik from the University of South Carolina and I asked him, let's initiate an international project on Holocaust education. And as he was non-Jewish and I was Jewish, uh, together we collaborate and we initiated a call for papers for UNESCO and after six months they gave us a positive uh, answer. Then in uh, 2010 our first um, special issue was uh, published and Reinhold Butschke was also part of it and uh, Elie Wiesel, Professor Elie Wiesel wrote for us uh, the introduction and it was really very, very special. And in 2011, they translated the project into Arabic and Chinese, and they established a department in Paris for Holocaust education, and they asked us to expand the project. And in 2015, um, we actually published a book uh, entitled As the Witnesses for Silent 21st Century Holocaust Education in Curriculum, Policy, and Practice. And this uh, book was launched in Geneva, and we had even an Iranian scholar who came to this uh, special uh, book launch. And this year, in 2016, uh, on 28th of January, I was invited to the United Nations to a special discussion on the future of Holocaust education. And uh, it was really a very moving uh, discussion, especially when I was invited by an, Arabic, um, um, by an Arabic manager, his name is Nasser Maher. And I thought that it's a very special occasion to invite an Israeli scholar, which was invited by a Palestinian uh, scholar, to a special discussion on the future of Holocaust education. And now I will start my address. I would like first to sincerely thank Rabbi Menachem Barkan for inviting me to this important conference on the future of Holocaust education. This attests to his uh, responsibility to highlight the vital educational issues of global citizenship and human rights which today are as pressing as ever, if not more so. It acknowledges the need to develop a new cosmopolitan memory of the Holocaust that transcends ethnic and national boundaries, a memory that is not only connected to the past, but also to the present and to a common future. A murky wave of xenophobia, racism, and hatred is flooding the world and educators must mobilize to resist it. In fact, the decision to hold this important conference makes a bold and unequivocal statement to the world, never again. The future of Holocaust memory and education lies in its ability to be relevant to the students of coming generations. While study about the Holocaust is important in and of itself, it is even more important to learn from the Holocaust in terms of promoting global citizenship, human rights, religious tolerance, and multiculturalism to ensure that such evil does not occur again. In many locations worldwide, the Holocaust has become a universal symbol of evil. Just as the story of the Exodus from Egypt, from the Bible, and the catch cry, let my people go, epitomizes moving from slavery towards freedom, the Holocaust is now the defining symbol of the most terrible denial of basic human rights and evil that we struggle to comprehend. Paradoxically, through its anti-racist message, we can transform teaching about the Holocaust from a su subject of despair to a subject of hope. We can convey to our students the message that the option of preventing the next Holocaust is in our hands. 
our students can take specific steps to counter racism and hatred on a local, particularistic level, and this will impact, impact the universal international level. In this way, adolescents can become agents of change. The most important education method, message of tikkun olam, repairing the world, should be that we must not be indifferent. We must not be bystanders because indifference is little. We have to act. We must be agenting facilitators against the evil of discrimination, prejudice, hatred, and violence. All teachers need to equip their students with the intellectual and practical tools to deal with the complex historical situations. Thus, Holocaust education should be constructed in such a way that the world can counter hatred, whether based on race, ethnic background, color, gender, or religion. Since my book, together with Doi Stevik, entitled As the Witnesses Fall Silent, 21st Century Holocaust Education in Curriculum, Policy, and Practice, was published, I have been invited to lecture in many places all over the world. What would you think the question is that people ask most at every lecture, everywhere? At universities in Beijing and Singapore, Australia, Europe, and the USA. The recurring question is, where was God in the Holocaust? I tell people that this is the wrong question. What they should ask is, where was man? Or where was humanity in the Holocaust? The Holocaust was perpetrated by human beings who had free choice, but chose to do evil, transforming themselves from people into monsters. The growing strength of populist groups and the far right in Europe must concern us all. The worldwide wave of anti-Semitism in which innocent Jews are attacked solely for being Jewish while walking the streets of Sydney, Melbourne, Brussels, Paris, and Roma has to worry us. The decapitation ceremonies by the Islamic State should cause us sleepless nights. It is not enough to make general statements of a universal nature about the unavoidable banal evil. We need to act. Over the past decades, Holocaust awareness globally has become a new form of collective remembrance. While events have faded, remembrance of the Holocaust has intensified. Faced with subsequent genocides from Cambodia to Bosnia and Rwanda, it has become a paradigm for genocide and Holocaust education has gained relevance. Relevance is a very important word. Holocaust education enables exploration of the ontologies and the epistemologies of human rights literacies in different social contexts from cognitive, social, and practical perspective. It acknowledges the need to develop a new cosmopolitan consciousness, transcending national boundaries, a memory not only connected to the past, but also to the belief in a common future. The cosmopolitanization of Holocaust awareness and the need to avoid such a tragedy occurring again is connected to post-national processes, thus educating about the dangers of racism and extreme nationalism can become an icon for a new cosmopolitan future. At the same time, we must be very, very careful. There can be no doubt that the transformation of the Holocaust into a universal symbol of evil has made it possible to address it in different cultural contexts. But there is a substantial inherent risk that this approach can normalize the Holocaust and thus diminish it. Normalization can lead to soft Holocaust denial, not aggressive explicit denial, but denial of its core Jewish elements. In addition, there is a tendency to describe some racial tensions and conflicts as Holocaust when such a comparison is inappropriate. The overuse of the term Holocaust can thus cheapen it. 
We need to integrate the universal message with the particular Jewish story to facilitate moral activism, reflection and compatibility. In this way, we can foster the culture of remembrance by engaging with the past to develop a commitment to a better future. Remembrance isn't a static picture of the past. It is also a dynamic task for the future, which poses major challenges for the entire civilized world. The notion of a culture of remembrance is inspired by the UN definition of a culture of peace. The United Nations defined a culture of peace as a set of values, attitudes, modes of behavior, and ways of life that reject violence and prevent conflicts by tackling the root causes in order to solve problems through dialogue and negotiation among individuals, groups, and nations. A culture of remembers is a hermeneutic process that involves continual adaptation, criticism, and reflection. The future of the remembrance is dependent on education. We need to use these discussions to say to the world, don't ever forget, let it happen again. Humanity has to stay vigilant, and Holocaust education is one of those awakenings, one of the tools we need to ensure that we do remember and ensure a brighter future for our children and grandchildren. With the enormous challenges facing us, we need work together to pull personal, professional, and economic resources and make it loud and clear that racism and hatred only lead to violence where the innocent suffer. We need to keep this discourse burning to the awakened current and future generations. My personal history makes me only too aware of this imparty. This is why I'm deeply involved in peace education and for 20 years I've been a facilitator of a conflict resolution course at my university between Palestinian and Jewish students. This is also why I'm standing before you today and why I decided to dedicate myself to understanding and strengthening the role of Holocaust education for future generations. I was named Zehavit for Zlaty, my grand-grandmother. Zlata means gold in Polish, and this is the meaning of my Hebrew name, Zehavit. I don't have a photograph of my great-grandmother, but I remember that my grandmother would often tell me how much I resemble her mother. I have tried to imagine Zlata's last journey to the gas chamber, how she stood in line not knowing what fate awaited her. I thought that if an angel would come from heaven and tell her, nothing can be done, your fate is sealed, but you should know you will have a grand granddaughter who will be privileged to live in the land of Israel and to be invited to the United Nations to discuss the future of Holocaust education. She would not have believed it she would certainly have looked heavenwards and said, that would only happen when the Messiah comes. We are honored to live in one of the most splendid periods in, in human history. We live in an advanced world of technology, knowledge, and material richness. And the question is, what are we doing with it? Have we learned to live in peace with each other? Have we learned to respect difference and human rights of others? If we look around the world today, we can see huge challenges with all our technology. We have not learned to overcome evil. Yet it is our responsibility to work for a better world. And the Holocaust, masked through education, become a powerful tool against racism, helping to educate towards a better, more just cosmopolitan future for the benefit of all humanity. Thank you very much.